Hello students, today we are going to understand the concept of nutrition and the functions of food. So here we are going to learn what is the definition of nutrition, what is the classification of food and what are the functions of food. Nutrition has been defined as food at work in the body. It includes everything that happens to food from the time it is eaten until it is used for the various functions in our body. Nutrients are chemical components which are present in our food which are required in adequate quantities for the various functions like growth, development, bodybuilding, reproduction and to lead a normal and healthy life. There are six basic nutrients that we need to eat in our diet which are namely carbohydrates, proteins, fat, vitamins, minerals and water. So basically nutrition is the science of food and the other substances therein, their action, interaction, their balance in relationship to health and disease and the processes by which the organism ingests, absorbs, transports and utilizes various nutrients and disposes of their end products. In addition to this, it is also concerned with social, economic, cultural and psychological implications of food and eating. So in simple words, if you have to say, it is a scientific study of food and its relation to health. So that is the definition for nutrition. Now coming to a concept called nutritional status. What is nutritional status? Nutritional status is the state of our body as a result of the foods consumed and their use by the body. Now nutrition status can be either good or poor. Now there are some characteristics to identify whether a person is having a good nutritional status or a poor nutritional status. What are these characteristics? The characteristics of good nutritional status are alertness, good natured personality, a well developed body, normal weight for height, a well developed and firm muscles, healthy skin, pink color of eyelids, then good subcutaneous fat, clear eyes, smooth and glossy hair, good appetite and excellent general overall health. Now this all is accompanied if a person has regular eating habits, sound and regular sleep, normal elimination habits and also resistance to diseases. Now coming to poor nutritional status. Now the characteristics of poor nutritional status are irritable personality, undersized and poorly developed body, abnormal body weight, poorly, poor and small muscles, pale skin, little very little or too much of subcutaneous fat, reddened eyes, rough hair, poor appetite and lack of vigor and endurance for work and susceptibility to infections. Now poor nutritional status may also be a result of poor and irregular food eating habits, bad food selection, irregularity in the schedules of meal, work, sleep and elimination. Now coming to the next term that is malnutrition. Malnutrition means an undesirable kind of nutrition which is leading to poor and ill health. It includes both undernutrition and overnutrition. Undernutrition is a state of insufficient supply of essential nutrients whereas overnutrition refers to excessive intake of either one or more nutrients which creates a stress in the bodily function. Those are the terms which is related to nutrition.
Now coming to the next thing that is how are foods classified. Before we go on to the classification of foods, let us understand what is the definition of food. Anything solid or liquid which is taken into the body that will help to meet the body's need for energy, maintenance of health, growth and reproduction is defined as food. We all need food to nourish ourselves because they are not only source of energy but they also need in, uh, they are helpful in bodybuilding. They are required for regulating various processes in our body and also help us to uh, prevent against various infections and diseases. Now foods are classified basically into four different types. The first classification is based on origin. Now based on origin it is again classified into two types. You have foods coming from the animal sources and foods coming from the plant sources. The animal sources are basically foods like milk and meat products and foods coming from the plant sources basically are cereals, pulses, fruits and vegetables. So that was the first classification of food. The second classification of food is based on the chemical component which is present in the food. So based on what the chemical component that is present in the food, they are classified again into different types. We have carbohydrates which contain basically carbon, hydrogen and oxygen. Then we have proteins which contains amino acids. Then we have fats which contains glycerol and phosphates. Vitamins which are again classified into different types. We have vitamin A, D, E and K, B complex and vitamin C. Then we have minerals which basically include calcium, iron, phosphorus, chlorine, fluorine and zinc etc. The third classification of food is based on the functions that they perform. Now they are classified either as energy yielding foods, bodybuilding foods and protective foods. Now what are energy yielding foods? These basically include carbohydrates and fats. Bodybuilding foods include proteins and protective foods include vitamins and minerals. The final classification of food is based on the nutritive value. So they are again classified into various types. We have five different basic food groups. The first one is cereals and their products which basically includes all the cereals like your rice, wheat, ragi, maize, bajra and jawar. Now these cereals, the main nutrient that we get from them is energy, proteins, invisible fat, certain amount of fiber, B complex vitamins etc. The second group is pulses and legumes. Now this food group includes pulses like dals, red gram dal, green gram dal, then all the whole grams like your rajma, chole and chana. Now this particular food group is rich in proteins, it also provides energy, invisible fat and also certain amount of calcium, iron and folic acid. Then coming to the third group, third group is milk and meat products. So all the milk products like paneer, cheese, curd and the other meat products like chicken, fish, egg, these basically provide proteins. They are also good sources of calcium, fat and riboflavin. The fourth group is fruits and vegetables. Now we have various varieties of fruits and vegetables. Now all the green leafy vegetables are very good sources of fiber, vitamin C, folic acid and also beta carotene which is a precursor of vitamin A. Then all the citrus fruits, they are excellent sources of vitamin C. Then the fifth category is 
fats and sugar now fats like oil butter ghee vanaspati they only provide energy they are good sources of fat soluble vitamins and the essential fatty acids and apart from fats even sugar now sugar is the only food which provides only empty calories and no other nutrient exception being jaggery which is rich in iron so that was the classification of foods so we classify them into four different categories now we have seen the what is the definition of nutrition the nutrients we have also seen the various functions of uh, the classification of food now we are going to understand what are the functions of food now as i had previously discussed food is something that nourishes our body and we all require food for the sustenance of life now anything that is eaten or drunk which meets the needs for energy body building regulation and protection of body is defined as food so there are three basic functions of food the first function is physiological function the second function is social function and the third one is psychological function now what are these three different functions and how are they related to us the first function that is physiological function under this the most important function of food is to provide energy now this energy is needed and is supplied by the oxidation of the various foods that are consumed in our body the second function is which uh, helps in building up various tissues and cells now apart from building new tissues and cells the food also helps to replace and repair any worn out cells of the body the next function is to regulate the various activities of our body which basically include like beating of the heart maintenance of the body temperature muscle contraction control of water balance and clotting of blood and also it helps to remove help in removal of waste products from the body the fourth and final function is the one which will help to improve our body's resistance of the disease so these were the physiological functions of food next coming to the social function food has always been a central part of the social existence it has been a part of our community social cultural and religious life special foods are distributed as either prasad or benediction either in the places of worship like temples churches etc feasts are given at specific stages of life either at birth naming ceremony uh, birthdays marriages etc food has been used as an expression of love friendship and social acceptance it is also used as a symbol of happiness at certain events of life for example certain sweets like pedas are distributed whenever there's announcement of success in life or examination or a birth of a baby laddus are associated with celebration of diwali cakes are basically given are associated with christmas and birthdays so like so and so forth there are various foods which are associated with various festivals and various occasions so basically food is an integral part of a social existence and this function is very important in our daily life usually when anybody serves refreshments at get togethers or meetings that creates a relaxed atmosphere so that was about the social function of food now coming to the third function which is the psychological function of food 
in addition to satisfying physical social needs of our body food must also satisfy certain emotional needs these include a sense of security love and attention that's why whenever we see familiar foods it makes us feel secure these sentiments are the basis of the normal attachment that we have towards mother's cooking sharing of food is a token of friendship and acceptance generally in a friendly gathering we try unfamiliar foods thereby we enlarge our taste buds with time and experience strange foods become familiar new and new tastes are formed so these aspects are important in food acceptance and must be considered in planning meals which are not only nutritionally adequate but also enjoyable for the group for whom they are intended so in conclusion the study of the science of nutrition deals with what nutrients we need how much we need it why we need it and from where we can get them nutrition is a result of the kinds of foods that are supplied to the body and how our body uses them for various functions food nutrition and health are intimately connected aspects of our life intake of right kinds of food and the amounts of food can ensure good nutrition and health which may be evident in our appearance efficiency and emotional well-being